Welcome everybody to the Onward VR Master League Season 14, Week 4. My name is Nightfire. With two E's and I will be your sole conductor in today's journey into the competitive space of Onward. We got ourselves a... Look at a new squad today. The Deviants coming in. Season 14. Pretty fresh. Uh, if you look at their player base, they don't have a history of... Uh, experience in the league, uh, at least for a couple of their players. And so, uh, you know, I'm very curious to see what a brand new team to the league looks like. So far, they look like they're a team capable of winning. <laughs> they're three and one so far this season. They've beat uh, Crucible, Delta Five, Tauntaun, uh, Fling, Flingwares, uh, and they beat them pretty good allowing very few points to come through. So they're coming off of some strong wins in the bronze division as a new team. And they're going up against French Onward Union, a team that as a name has been around since season four. Some of the players have played Onward since then, but it's been in some cases, you know, uh, there was a gap there from season six to 13. Uh, for a group of their for the group of uh, FOU players there where they did not play in the league and so in a lot of ways you're looking at a team that's essentially new as of season 13 with a little bit more experience they are silver I think they're capable of potentially pushing up into the gold rate uh, ranking at some point throughout this season um, and so deviants are really kind of getting in my opinion a, a test here of what they're able to do as a new team and we'll see if they're going to be a squad that is one that we're gonna wanna kind of see how they progress throughout the course of the season, or if FOU or maybe <laughs> a team that we should be keeping an eye on as uh, coming back into the league as of season 13. But we are about ready to jump into our first round as we do populate the lobby and get players in. And so we do have a chance to take a look at the pick bands for today. If you're new to Onward, the Deviants are the home team. They get to ban two maps from a predetermined map pool at the start of the season. We're four weeks into the season now. French Onward Union, the away team, get to also ban two maps from that map pool. And then the home team, the Deviants, get to pick their first map, and they have picked Subway. And what this means is that it is essentially, this is a phase where the teams assess their opponent, try and understand their strengths and weaknesses by gathering their stats from the website it shows everything you know like if we look at the deviants as a team we can see that they have a hundred percent win weight on subway three and three so far it's why they chose this map the bands coming in from french onward union were abandoned in snow peak those are two maps that the deviants haven't even played this season um snow peak actually they played once and they did win um but they haven't played abandoned this season and so to me that means that french onward union are banning those maps because they don't want to play them. They're not ready to be playing Abandoned or Snow Peak, which are very long range maps. And then if you look at the Deviants bans, they've banned away Arctic and Tanker, two maps they haven't played yet this season. And so again, I think it's uh, two, both teams banning maps that they're maybe uncomfortable with. Uh, those two maps being two close quarters maps. And so you can also see maybe a difference in preference by these uh, map picks and bans. And I would have suspected that the Deviants would have taken us to maybe a place like Bizarre or Downfall for map number one. Um, but because of their close quarter bans, they ended up have picked Subway, which is a close quarters map. Um, I do kind of find interesting. Um, let me figure out. situation is here as we are waiting for a few more players to connect in on both sides of the deviants and fou for now we can look at the rosters though on the deviants we have aztec unlink ghost and spooner and over on fou we have tonico the nemo pgo3 and jim and again, we're waiting on the fist to connect in on both sides. So hopefully we don't have to wait too long for them to get into the lobby. But we did take a look at the Deviants. 
We talked a little bit about the FOU's history. I want to look at more of these players to kind of verify this. Okay, so there is some uh, player experience here with uh, season, seasonal experience. If you look at... Um, Oh, I guess who, like, this, this, uh, this player isn't in the lobby yet. Unless they're going in as a different name. Well, let's see. We're just waiting for those fists to connect, but... Um, yeah, it is, it is mostly new players on Deviants, and then FOU... I feel like they've... Yeah, they also are going to have mostly new players. Uh, yeah, I'm, I guess they have a couple. I'm looking at... it's, a, it's a, it, The FOU are an odd bag these days. They have some players coming uh, that have stuck around, like Bagul, uh, who have been playing on the FOU since Season 6. So there's 12 seasons. There's 6 seasons of experience. No, 8 seasons of experience right there. Um, coming in from Bagul. Playing on the, uh, the FOU when at one point they were diamond in EU. Since then, they've had, obviously, roster shakeups, players coming and going. What player I was thinking of in particular was the Namo. The Namo. Who played seasons 3, 4, and 6, and then came back in 13 and 14. But like I said, they also do have... See if they have anyone on the roster now that is a new player. I'm not seeing the PG. No. At least season 12. On a go. Season 13 is their newest player right now and on that roster. So definitely some experience coming in from FOU. And so yeah. Like I said earlier, this is definitely a, the first test for the Deviants to see if they'll be able to uh <coughs> come out on top here. getting the word that they should have there may be a 5v4 five, five here today which really would be unfortunate but it would be a big opportunity for the deviants that could really kind of get themselves up the ladder a bit here if FOU can't bring 5 and the deviants do get their 5th in then yeah we're looking at uh I said five before opportunity for the deviants and a big chance for them to go up in rank not a lot not often that uh we do get the chance to jump into a eu series as well so we're happy to be here but it does look like we are gonna have to go to a little break as we wait for these players ready i think about five more minutes until we, the round uh does have to begin so not gonna be too long but when we come back should be the start of subway fingers crossed
Well, in an interesting turn of events. <laughs> in what I was expecting to be a... <laughs> five before the other way. FOU have scooped up a sub. And the Deviants have not. Uh, it's kind of odd, considering that it is pretty easy to grab a sub. Uh, as we saw with the Deviants. Or, excuse me, with FOU. And having that fifth is pretty helpful. But... Doesn't seem to be the case. C4 has been placed here as well, and so I wonder if Ghost and Unlink are going to be prepped for what is now a very heavy defensive setup here. Ghost flies past, catches one in the head, and a nice double. Oh, they don't need all five. The C4 detonates as well, and they just happen to be split well enough where Unlink doesn't get caught on the backside by it. So a quick double kill starts things off for the Deviants. Maybe this is why they pushed in there, confident that they wouldn't have much trouble challenging, but PG swings by for one, finds the double as well. They're going to defend the stairwell. Meanwhile, other side of objective, Spooner and Aztec are pushing in. And a fast push coming through. Namo not ready. They've lost control of the front side of their objective. And Tonico and PG might not be aware of this. They certainly had to have heard the shots. Tonico does peek and Spooner finds the second kill. PG down as the last uh, surviving defender has to push in here. And Aztec could be capping around the corner. They're going to instead trade with PG and Deviants come out on top in a 4v5 with a very quick round one. That's certainly a pace they're setting. And I do think we're going to get into a 5v5 eventually. I have information that the Deviants should have their fifth connecting soon. But, uh, yeah, so far they're not in. <laughs> and the Deviants don't seem to care much. Definitely an aggressive play for them to be pushing that hard. And that kind of pushing can certainly get shut down very fast. You did see a defensive position there from, I believe it was uh, Namo down here. They were extended up to the pillar to defend from any sort of cross. This is a pretty risky spot considering how exposed you are to the south. And you'll oftentimes see players instead tuck in on this backside Uh of the subway now that's of course a pretty meta position and so some teams will smoke and frag that but you can see the way the deviants attacked they weren't even really looking down that alleyway so it could have been a, a good opportunity for defense either way a good bit of back and forth here with fou taking the first round and i hope we're not but we could be going into a timeout now because the technical they had to play that first round based on time you only have 15 minutes after the scheduled start time until you have to start your round, no matter what your lobby looks like. And so they started the round and, and played through it and ended up winning. But now they can take a timeout and buy another 10 minutes time if they wanted to to try and get their fifth in. They're not going to do that. They're going to keep playing a 4v5, <laughs> which gets a lot harder when you're on defense. So we'll see how they set up as FOU will be attacking Again, they managed to bring in that sub on their roster here today. They also weren't able to full uh, fill a full five, but having that sub, it can be, uh, in a lot of cases, beneficial, you know? At least in the attacking sense, it's another gun and a few more grenades, utility. You can really kind of even put them on a bad kit <laughs> and give the rest of your team the utility they need. And so having a sub is better than nothing. And you can see in this case, Max is really actually just defending from flanks. They've put them on the back side. And it's interesting. I like the way that it all works. You know, the sub um, system, the subs are incentivized to win. If they do, then they're able to substitute for higher ranked teams, you know. And so much like a team itself winning and going up against higher ranked teams the subsystem from my understanding works a lot of this uh, in that same way and so you know max shouldn't have any gripes about covering the flank if he knows that <clears throat> rest of fou are going to be synced and coordinated pushing up and they very much are you can see the flash of the smokes coming over the top pg flies down to catch the first kill aztec 
holding a bit of a risky position there on the corner. You usually, usually see it, the defenders take a deeper defensive position. But it's looking like it's going to be a heavy north push, and they may be trying to go for the cap. Standard nade on the ghost position. Rolls a bit too far, ghost survives. Unlink peeks out very riskily, and there's a lot of fire that they're experiencing. Ghost swings wide, catches one. Nice refrag from the Nano. Smokes out on OBJ on the corner. Spooner's crashing back. Unlink is close. But are they going to be close enough? Are they going to be able to swing this and to prevent the cap? I don't even think they know. And this is something Deviants will learn. You can cap around the corner, and Unlink clearly does not is not aware that they have to swing this to prevent this from coming through. And FOU are going to get a nice two points. And that's something you really see in these new teams in these in these bronze matches you'll you'll see what are typical meta attacks really work out well just because they were de they they were designed and and developed over time and they work for a reason because they they that north objective man <laughs> always capable and that's how you cap it you 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 break the defense on the stairs you m203 the smoke down the hallway so that you deny vision from any defender behind coke and then you f you nade this corner which they tried to do but it threw it a little too far and you nade this corner here too because sometimes players will sit here wait till they hear audio and then just blind fire on uh, up against the wall and they did that they did both of that and then and then pushed up the challenge is once you pushed up that if you cap too slow you can then get swung on but Again, I don't believe the Deviants were aware that they could be capped on around that corner. And so a lesson learned and one they'll now see in clear view on the cast. But yeah, that's something that comes from the FOU's experience. And again, I think this team is a team that's capable of being in the gold division, not silver this year. And so with plays like that, they will certainly earn their way in. We do have the fifth connected in for the for the deviants now. And we'll figure out what to call them once they come across a kill. <laughs> for now I'm thinking L's. But we'll end up going with. Fence, you can call him fence, you can call him bars, you can call him lines. There's a lot of names that you could go with. But I don't think it's really a good way of branding yourself as an esports player, but what do I know? I pre fired. Hold on, hold on. Deviant's not getting the quick spawn for our new objective. That means that they will have to defend a battle against some pretty tucked in defense because it means that FOU can push up into places like this where Banamo is really waiting for backs to be exposed. And yeah, Spooner not ready for it. Nano misses their first set of shots. Spooner goes down on the corner. Aztec is still here and they're going to trade down. That's a one for two. That's a net positive for FOU on the defense. There's only three left for the Deviants. Like two could be planning a push up onto Tonico shortly, or at least unlink. I'll have to keep an eye on Ghost as they're the closest to the objective and just around the corner from Jinx. Surprised that we haven't seen C4 detonated here. That's a pretty common trend. And Jinx does fly the corner. But not well enough. They tried to pre-fire, do a little guesswork, and almost gave away their position rather than put down that fire. And now Ghost is almost on top of objective. Max in the back corner, clutching it up as the sub for their FOU team. Fends off a potential capper. Conico still holding in case a south push comes, but Unlink looks like they're wrapping around all the way through the basement. 
Bar is coming up to the corner, and Max certainly hearing these footsteps. Nade coming in. That's a flash. A little too far, though. Max not going to get blinded by that. They're checking the cat with, though. And it's going to be a death for them on objective. PG and Tonico, the last alive. And Tonico gets pushed. They find their kill in the basement. It's going to be up to the fresh entry into the, into the match. And PG is going to swing wide for the kill. FOU put up a quick three. Yeah, I also noticed, uh, checking in chat, I do see a couple of folks mentioning uh, the new logo from FOU. Definitely a cool design. And I do appreciate that as a new team, the Deviants already have a logo. A lot of squads could come in and we're only in the week four, but, you know, what to show off. Represent your squads and the brand. Something that, you know, you just kind of start playing casually, you don't necessarily think about, but, you know, if you look at uh, teams, at least in, a lot of teams have done it in Onward, admittedly, but look at teams in Echo Arena, they really do try and brand them, their, their teams and then their fan base around their team. It's something that will be slowly coming, you know, as VR and ER, VR eSports continues to grow. And I know some may argue that it's not growing with Echo Arena going away, which certainly is a unfortunate goodbye there, but I will say there's a lot to look forward to in the future. Onward in particular. I mean, end of life in quest support I think that opens up a lot of opportunities for the game to expand and grow and add new mechanics that maybe they couldn't support through the quest. There's a lot of potential with Onward as a game, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it grows and evolves over the course of hopefully the next few years. If that's the case, maybe we'll see the Deviants at some point on the main stage in a finals. For now, though, they have a long road ahead of them to climb the ladder. And they're not exactly winning their map on Subway. FOU are on the attack. They'll be fully pushing in from this stairwell entry point. The entire team is going to be coming down this alley and challenging Aztec, who is holding a pretty tough to identify spot. Turn off the overheads. They're very hard to see in this dark corner. But this should also be a position that gets pre-fired. If FOU are doing all of this pre-firing, they're not afraid to give away their position. So they should be swinging this this corner and be shooting into this spot where uh, it's currently being defended by Aztec. And yeah, you can see Nammo does put some fire down just over the shoulder of Aztec. And Aztec's going to stay here. That's risky. Sh shooting and moving is the typical strategy here. But hey, what? Why fix what, uh, what they broke? They still don't know that Aztec's here, and now they do after they miss the shots onto Tonico, and you do see them shift off a bit. A nice nade comes in. No, it's a flash. Blinds them, and Aztec re-peaks. Doesn't know that there's five strong here. I'll make it two now as the other two split off. Tonico and Jimps. Trying to get rid of Aztec, and again, they can't see Aztec in that dark corner. Incredibly hard to identify. If we turn the lasers off, we can barely see them in that dark corner. Uh, that's a pretty good smoke. On the other side, 03 and Max, not quite pushed up yet. But Aztec still holding inside this dark corner. And all this guest fire, brief fire, blood fire isn't catching. And now Aztec has gone prone in the corner. 
even harder to spot. Really tucked in. Meanwhile, we got to focus over on the other side. BGO3 catches one. Bars in the corner getting suppressed by Max. But as they push too far, they'll go down in the Deviants. Four left alive. Put up a nice defensive round. And themselves another point on the board. Not letting this one get away from them too far. But like I said, Deviants have been on a three-game win streak. And I think maybe they're surprised that they are losing right now. But the cap and then the quick round win for FOU still puts them in the lead 3-2. Our next objective takes us back down the stairs onto the main subway floor with another pretty capable objective. If you can make the right entry points through the train. We'll have to see what deviants do here, though. They played a pretty quick offensive round on both on both objectives and so I anticipate them to be moving on this one pretty fast and there is the chance to be to be down on this objective pretty quickly that's if you want to be a little bit reckless because there can be to this point very aggressive counter defensive angles that if you don't Cautiously check. Uh, it could mean your whole team dying to swing a corner. The stairs, for example, players can sprint up these stairs and be ready to challenge an offense pushing in through the alley. They can sprint down the catwalk and be ready to ready to challenge players coming down the stairs. And they can sprint over to the north stairs. And so there can be some very aggressive FOU defensive setups here that I would actually anticipate coming in from them. Considering they are, if anything, preying on the inexperience of the deviants here. You, I guess they don't know, but if you do get a glitch, you can reset the round. <laughs> but another lesson learned from the deviants. We'll see what kind of uh, level of F a defense FOU throw out. All right now, it's not going to be anything crazy aggressive. So Ghost isn't going to get challenged on the stairs you check them there isn't going to be any challenge on the catwalk and i do kind of want to pop over to pgo3 because they may be the ones that first run into the action here that are the tonico the edges like i said deviants are pushing in pretty fast tonico should be hearing these footsteps north soon Who in PG trades, which means that there's going to be one that will pop out there. Conoco's still holding this north alleyway. Oh, and they're going to prep a nade. Toss around the corner and a nice quick swing from Bars. Catches Donico. You're good. I'm like, <laughs> it hit the floor when those shots came out. Oh, and now James in a very hard to root out position. Aztec. Trying to catch him. Thinks they have Jinx down and does not. They're actually being put, pushed by Namo. And they get caught out. Ghost also had the shots on the back. The Deviants are gaining control of objective space. And Bars is on objective. A C4 gets detonated. That's around the corner. Downs Bars from, and prevents them from entering in the code. One defender left. And it's Max who's way off the objective. Uh, this is the risk of having a sub. You can literally lose rounds. Ghost and Unlink. Gonna have all the time in the world to cap. Max not aware they're the last one alive until they are, and they're now trying to push in. How quickly can the Deviants punch in the code? And actually, pretty quick. They're gonna take their map on map number one. And that stings. That stings a lot. I gotta imagine FOU are not in a happy spot right now. Max started off things well, and... Well, you can't put the blame on them as a sub. That's literally the risk you take as a team when you can't fill that roster. Unfortunate, but fortunate. If you're rooting for the Deviants, they take two. They go up for three, and they scrape away with their map pick. Well, there was a little luck or pure skill that helps them. It doesn't matter. 
Map one is in their hands, and now we decide where we go for map two. Let's see how FOU want to direct the rest of the series, where they'll want to take the second map. But, I do sympathize. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you, you, you learn lessons from losses, right? And so, I assure you that in the future, Max will be very focused on making sure that as a sub, they'll know kill counts and be paying attention to who's alive and who's dead. Maybe even more than they need to. It's definitely something as a sub you have to kind of be aware of. And and frankly, as a team, you almost want to put your sub in a position where they are going to be the front line instead of a back line. You know, so it's so it's all a matter of how you use the sub and and, and recognizing your responsibility as a substitute. Because uh, it's definitely a thing, you know. It, we have the whole sub pool for a reason. You know, if you can't you can't sign on into a team to be playing regularly every week, then you can be a substitute and join a team when they need to have someone to fill out a roster. And those subs are used for scrimmages, for real games, and you know, when the pressure's on, obviously, um, everything's a little different. So again, I can't blame Max by any means. But like I'm saying here, I don't envision that'll happen again. And it'll be a lesson learned from them to make sure that they're aware of that pitfall. As a, and you know, really, it can happen to any. It doesn't. It's not just a, the, the, It's not just because they're a substitute. It can happen to anyone on that team that would end defending in that position. You know, so map one. Off of a cap goes to the Deviants, and now FFOU are taking us to Bazaar for map number two. Just waiting for the rest of the Deviants to, to jump in, and it looks like we may have... Uh, some subs coming in for Deviants, potentially. Which would be interesting, considering they started 4-5. To have more than five members now. We'll have to see. Unless I'm not remembering Unlink. No, they were in the, they were in the last round. But yeah, should be hopping in here as soon as everyone is in lobby. And again, not seeing any subs. FOU do not have uh, their fifth roster player. And so Max will continue to stay and fill out that fifth spot. And yeah, I think it's the same roster for Deviants. Aztec, Ghost, Unlink, Bars, and Spooner. And I'm open to hearing other names for what this is and some people have played with them and know what they prefer to be called with the spelling maybe it's some ridiculous phonetic thing where it's like illily 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 in which case i'm not saying that either you know <laughs> uh or at least i'm not gonna say it without getting tongue twisted Anyway, appreciate everyone that is tuning in, hanging out, enjoying some of the uh, bronze action here. Bronze silver in front of us. And again, I do like to always showcase new teams at the start of the season. Kind of get an idea of what they're doing. And then we really do focus more in on the upper end, upper end of the uh, uh, of the master and diamond and all of that uh, towards the back half of the season. And so, you know, uh, we give the, the, the limelight onto these players now and then really kind of focus in on the top of the ladder once we get to the point when it matters obviously every game matters really especially if you're a team like the deviants who want to be climbing up that ladder and positioning themselves 
potentially into that gold division for next season. That's what it's really about, climbing that ladder. And, and frankly, you can't climb to diamond as a bronze team in, in, in one season. You just got to be really good. <laughs> and uh, right now, BG is going to kick things off for FOU with a nice start. Ammo tries to cross with no smokes, goes down to Aztec. Four for four, uh, four v4 now. There's the smoke that does deny some vision, and there are two that get across. I just saw a shit ton of smoke. I might. Booner. I was gonna, I was gonna pop over to their perspective, and they instantly go down to BG03, who catches them getting a little too aggressive. And FOU have full control of the east side of this entry point here. They're gonna be coming down from the east down into the objective posi uh, position and they may be even going for a cap ghost is tucked in nicely they'll be able to be a threat and they do have at least a view on the objective here from bars but a well-placed smokes will allow for entry in for a cap potentially here so let's see how FOU push this in their attack is very much set uh, in a good spot now, though, and they can set up for their push in. Oh, Ghost gets ID by Tonico, and a quick double suddenly puts the Deviants uh, down to just Aztec holding the cross for FOU. Looking to push into this objective, and PGO3 does not have a clean view on the objective. Like I said, just because you're a substitute doesn't mean that you would also potentially let in the cap. As Aztec swings here, Tonico sacrifices their life. They did not shoot at Aztec. Maybe that's because they didn't have their gun in hand. But now the smokes are here. Nades are coming in. A flash on a Jim to potentially deny the cap as Jim is here, punching in the code in the smoke. Aztec's not suppressing an FOU are going to give Aztec another lesson in capturing objectives. And the Deviants are learning today that their opponent, FOU, not pulling any punches. And like I was just saying, just because Max is a sub and the, the cap comes through doesn't mean that it's any by means because they're a sub. It can happen to anybody. It just happened right there to Aztec as the last defender. So, the lesson, if you lost control of objective and you're the last defender, and there's smoke on the objective. You put your entire clip into that smoke. <laughs> That's the lesson to be learned there. You put your entire clip into that smoke and you just spray. Because if you hit one bullet in the head, you catch them, they're dead. And you hit one bullet in the body, you get a ooh, and you hear someone's there. The flash was beautiful and I think it bought more time, but, it, but you have to use that time then to just dump through the smoke because that could be happening right under your nose, and it was. On the other side, FOU played that wonderfully. <laughs> Again, recognizing they need to take control of the East, especially once they had two kills in the East. That's a ton of information. They know that they've got two dead that are supposed to be defending East side. There's not going to be more because you have to also defend the South. You have to defend the middle. And for there to be a third person over on the East, on that side would be a lot there can be three with one tucked into the l so it's not out of scope but it's just they have pretty good confidence that they're going to be able to push that east side and then use their utility later for the objective so big kills good communication fou starting off again pretty strong with the cap PG identifies bars in the north. This gives them an idea of spawn because you can only be at that position. What is, that? What is Spooner up to? Spooner is just flying through here. They're not going to check one of the most standard defensive positions. They're back exposed. They go down as they're just about to swing onto Jim. So a nice coverage there from the FOU squad. Deviants continuing to stick to their aggressive play style here. With 
flying forward here. Bars on the north. Where is the last one? In the south, as anticipated, it's Ghost. And this duo has a lot ahead of them. While Subway was looking like a map they were very least, uh, you know, practiced on. Bizarre so far. Looking like FOU are going to carry a little bit of the advantage. <laughs> very least a map understanding. And I mean, that comes down a lot to, again, the fact that this team hasn't even played that many maps in the season. You know, sure, they could be their players that invested their time in the pub lobbies and played PG. We'll find Ghost trying to cross. Smoke not quite far enough. But, uh,. Yeah, this FOU squad again is, is a team that I think could be in gold. Very surprised to see them lose Subway 4-3. And uh, this is more of what I would expect from them going up against a new team like this. Oh, an opportunity for a kill to come through. Bars patiently not taking those shots. And Bars finds the first kill. For Deviants, at least. The first of five that they'll need if they want to clear out this defense. But they don't need to. They can kill Max in the corner. Nemo on objective. And have an entry for a cap, honestly. So, we've seen him do it once already. Who's to say Deviants won't be looking for a cap again? The only trouble is, of course, that this angle is being watched heavily. Or was. Tonico goes down. Bars is gonna fly up here, swing the corner, catches Nemo, but Max on the backside, redeeming themselves and locking in around, making them 3 0 for FOU. And suddenly, Bazaar is very much out of the grasp of Deviants, or at least seems so. That objective definitely not playing well for them. And now we go to another one that I think lends itself more to defense. <laughs> Barcode. I like that. I'll just take a look at chat. A shout out to everyone that is tuning in. We got a nice crowd stopping by, enjoying. These new teams duking it out, and obviously a very veteran team uh, battling it out here. I guess it really is a new versus the old in a lot of ways. <laughs> but uh, FOU looking very good on Bazaar. And a shout out to everyone tuning in. Mother's Membrane, Sausage, uh, Sonder is me, Gino, Identity Crisis, uh, Marsock, Valor, Magnus. Confused power. Appreciate you all enjoying the series this afternoon. And eh, it's not a bad one. You know, I think the benefit of the uh, jumping into these new teams and watching these matches is you do get a little bit of that wacky, wild gameplay. <laughs> uh, it's a lot less tight and very much more, it's like a, a very much more loosey goosey. <laughs> If that makes any sense at all. Um, we'll see if Deviant can tighten it up here. And grab themselves a defensive round as we go into it for round number three on map two. Getting three stacked in the south. And I wonder how quick FOU are intending on pushing this with them getting here so soon. It could be pushing in to the objective space relatively quickly. Depends on how quick Tonico flies up to the middle. Because they can be on objective very soon. They've identified Spooner rotating up to the two story.
literally flies right in front of their own friendly fire. Maybe not recognizing that that angle was already held through the window. Good smoke, though, does allow Namo to get here, and Tonico catches Spooner up on the top floor. The pinch is coming in. Bars and PG shut down, too. Tonico's still here, looking for the backs of this defense, and they'll find Ghost. Spooner does get confirmed. Unlink is here looking for Donigo, and Donigo is just inches away, separated by a small sliver of metal. Bars still holding down from the south push as Nemo does identify them and catches a, a tag through the window. They're going to keep pushing and swing the corner to find the kill. Nicely done there. Nemo's going to keep this pressure going as Unlink and Aztec are the last two defenders. Unlink down, Aztec alone. FOU looking to make this a 4 to 0. Just have to get rid of Aztec. Smoke comes out onto objective. Tonico seems to know right where Aztec is, and Aztec catches Tonico before the smoke's deployed. Two are out on objective, and Aztec is on a long rotation. Have they learned their lesson or not? We're about to find out. We're about to find out. Oh no, and I'm not on the right screen. Wow, I'm so sorry, team. Everyone's getting a little. Or that's okay. We're all bronze. I'm a bronze caster. I've got it here for the last three minutes, and Max is going to find the kill. FOU will take that last round. I apologize for missing most of it, but we got there in the end. And FOU took one back. Looking much better here on Bazaar. We have to now remake Lobby, do a little swapping of maps and hosts, and we'll be back into it for map three. And again, I do apologize for missing that swap. I hate to do it. That doesn't happen in maybe a se whole season. What are you going to do? We roll with the punches. Just like the Deviants have to roll with the punches here. They're looking at a big opportunity to get a win. But I don't think even they necessarily anticipated getting here. Four and one would be a huge start to their season. They will be going up against a tough team next week. But FOU on the other end do not want to let a brand new team into the league take two maps from them. Maybe Deviant's map pick here will be enough to get them into a position where they're comfortable. Downfall is the only thing that's uh, available in terms of range. Oh, no, I'm, I'm incorrect. Quarantine is also on the table. And it looks like that's going to be that map three pick. Deviants will be on the attack as it is their map choice. FOU on the defense. And I do question this map pick. Let's take a look at FOU's map history here. I haven't played quarantine yet this season, which is interesting. That's four weeks of no quarantine, which seems like a lot. Is there a record on it? And last season. One and one. Wow, they, they played this map one time over the course of a season and four weeks. Not a bad pick. They played quarantine as much as they played downfall night in season 13. That's crazy. That either means that they banned it a lot or it was banned against them. And so they didn't get a chance to play it. But I guess we'll find out if their uh, <laughs> map knowledge is still there for quarantine. Sure it is. They're a practice team. Like I said, they're playing scrims and they're playing outside of just the regular season matches that we have on record. They're even playing in other leagues sometimes. So it's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of 
unknown info that we potentially don't, you know, you know, are missing here, but it's not a bad pick if this is the, uh, you know, <laughs> for the Deviants, then. Let's take a look at how they've played Quarantine so far. Three and two. Or excuse me, two and three. 67% win rate. Not bad, 75% of rounds won. So even on their loss, they put up a good fight. Yeah, that's a... Uh... Solid performance from them on quarantine so far. So the Indians may be able to squeak away with a series win here up against the team that has a lot more experience than them. Still waiting on a fifth to connect in for the Deviants. And once they do, we will be jumping into round one on quarantine here. Till then, we just gotta kinda hang around and wait. I guess while we have some downtime, a reminder that the seasons for Blast On and Ultimax begin in just a few weeks time. In, in Blast On's case, I think the 20th, so nine days away. Uh, and yeah, I was just thinking, uh, Ultimax season starts the 27th, so two games free to play, both of them. Don't need to buy in at any, way, uh, at any measure in order to be able to compete in those leagues. And they are going to be featured at the uh, BRML convention June 3rd and 4th. So there's going to be more information coming out around that, what that means. Um, and you're going to want to get involved in those seasons. They're already very skilled players playing in those leagues, but... It is a ever-evolving meta and, you know, tons of new players have been joining in to both Blast On and Ultimax and, uh, you know, developing new strats. And it's just so fun to see metas evolve with uh, growing, fresh growing esports scenes. So do go check those games out. They have tons of players playing their game pretty, uh, uh, those games actively. And so if you are looking for something else. Uh, a little different, obviously, than the military simulation style of Onward. I would take a look at Blaston and Ultimax. Blaston, in particular, a very good calisthenic workout. <laughs> if you're dodging bullets well, then you're really uh, working out quite a bit. I think in the last tournament we had, uh, one of the contenders actually sprained an ankle towards the end of the event, and it did impact their ability to perform uh, in those matches, so... It's a physical sport, physical e-sport. Uh, well, I guess there's so many ways you could say it, but if we're going into uh, oh, they're there. I was wondering if we were into a timeout for Deviants since we were waiting for their fifth to connect, but. Ghost has entered the lobby. We'll go ahead and give the ready, and we should be getting into round one soon. Let's go ahead and take a look at our active rosters for this final round. The final map of FOU and Deviants, the map three decider which is always what we're looking forward to here on the caster desk. It is going to be Jim, PGO3, Tonico, and Dynamo, and Max continuing to sub in for FOU. And over on Deviants, we still have Aztec, Spooner, Unlink, L or I, or Li 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 Li, or Bars, or Fence, and Ghost. 
making up the deviance, and we'll see if they can deviate from a series loss and get themselves a couple of W's on their map pick. As we stutter, start of a round like we always do, onward, please fix. We get into the action. Round number one on our decider kicking off. Aggressive move coming in from PG, but not terribly risky considering the spawn points. Deviants don't necessarily have a clean line unless they also risk pushing into that middle rubble building. Instead, they've split 3-2, three, 3 to the south, 2 to the north, as you can see on the overhead. One uh, under the building, I don't know which one, but uh, one in front of me. PG goes down on Link, gets the location called out. Oh, so or, excuse me, uh, Ghost goes down. And you could. Sometimes there's a bug where you can hear the down player's comms. We do, but not obviously PG. You could hear that position was being identified of PG in the okay, corner, but they find two trying to cross that south street. And all shuts down Aztec rotating from the north. PG gets bars on the third story. FOU are shutting down deviants at every entry point. Yeah, I can't. I'm not going to. I'm not going to PK. I'm going to get caught. I don't have a smoke. I have a flash. <laughs> There's no safe space for the Deviant offense here. FOU shutting down every entry point with five left alive. That's a tough pill to swallow and things are going awry for this Deviant team. Starting to spiral a little bit out of control. Five unanswered points between maps two and three. And that one was zero kills coming in for Deviants. That definitely stings. We'll see if they can find a few here on off on defense. Obviously, they'll need to. And with this objective, it is particularly hard to push and capture without losing at least one or two attackers. So I'm curious to see how FOU will want to push this one. I honestly feel like maybe just going right up the middle would be one of their better routes, but... Round one again, starting well for FOU, and they take that lead. They take the lead every single start, every single round one. They took it on a cap on Subway, a cap on Bazaar, and a defensive hold there. I imagine if you're Deviants, you have to be thinking that a cap attempt will be coming in here again because they've done it at the start of every round so far. PG was oh yeah PG's position on the on that north side definitely coming in oh it's Tonico PG was on the they were on that three story either way three kills on the round nap. And into it we go, Deviants now defending. This cross can cost you your life, depending on the spawn point for FOU, but no one identifying this cross. And Deviants are going to be able to set up nicely in the south here. Yeah, 
There you go. Yep. This is what I kind of anticipated FOU to do. You're playing into the idea that the deviants are going to spread out like they have been. Try and catch you on corners and where you typically push from. But FOU have full control now of this middle building outside of maybe TKing each other. But they have full control up the middle. They'll need to get rid of bars or go pass them up against the wall. They obviously need to get rid of Spooner. So their exit isn't going to be easy. They can come in from. They can exit out of the basement. They might end up doing, but for now they're trying to get out here and cannot. As another kill comes through, and that might have been blind through the smoke. One. Yeah, I think the better approach would have been up the middle. Up the basement, then you're avoiding Bar's position. Smoking Spooner. Swinging this corner and just going right onto objective. That way you're tapping into the whole idea of playing too fast for deviants, like FOU frankly have been. And... Ooh, that was almost a big swing there. Spooner had gone down, they could have basically set up for the exact push. I'm talking about a huge swing from Ghost. Catches one, but a nice pick up there and a confirm from Spooner at least prevents the res. Jim still alive in that basement there and deviants are down. To three, but it doesn't matter. FOU get picked up, Spooner catches another one from that three story. And Deviants do indeed find some kills. And that is a pretty big round, because like I said, it was five unanswered points so far from FOU. And to stop that bleeding is big, because now we go to we swap objectives, new objective placement, Freshen things up or it can make things worse <laughs> But I do feel this one's pretty tough to cap and so I think both the deviants and FOE are gonna have a tough time at pushing this one, but Curious to see how the deviants will Likely try and fast push this considering every offensive round they have really just charged out the objective Not a bad strategy, but you do have to be aware of the risks it takes and what kind of angles you expose yourself to and in some cases, it can throw off a meta defense if you just kind of go with an unorthodox, aggressive push. It can also get you killed by one, your whole team killed by one guy, so. <laughs> uh, that's the beauty of honor. You never know. The risk reward is always there. And the variety is always there. And I think it's why it attracts so many teams and players. I think right now we're at 105 active teams which, if my knowledge is correct, is only six short of our record number of teams participating in Onward VRML, which is pretty great. <laughs> and again, to see new teams coming in is always awesome because it means that there's a consistent flow of new players, both into the game and into the league. So we're happy to see Deviants here, and frankly, I'm happy to see him battling it out for a best of three map three decider here this afternoon. Hopefully the whole team follows the channel. And if they don't have Twitch accounts, they all make them follow the channel. So they can catch more action live here on this channel. And if you're enjoying this, then please do hit that follow button. We do regular season broadcasts here throughout the course of a season, which is sometimes up to 15 weeks. And right now we're only on week four. So there's a lot more gameplay ahead of us here throughout the course of those weeks. And I do hope to see more of you tuning in regularly to those matchups whether they're bronze teams or the best of the best which again we will be showing you know they actually had a game just the other day with op battling it out and i think op is one of the teams that we're really going to want to keep an eye on as a team that's going to be a top contender one of the 
a team that's filled with veteran players, but a new uh, team name and a new group of them. Anywho, back to the action we go to see if the Deviants can find themselves their third or fourth, fourth win in a row and keep this win streak alive. We've got themselves a south objective to attack. And they can be a threat onto some positions right away from this rooftop, but it's risky. That's what we're talking about, Spoons. Let's go. <laughs> Shots from 180. Unlink is in a very tough spot to be now, as they do have a couple of lines. Taking a look over here. The angle from the gas station and Nico through the windows, but Unlink has gone prone and is backstepping their way out. So they will be able to avoid being shot at. Meanwhile, the rest of the offense working their way in. Potentially up into PG's line of fire. And Ghost gets ID. Bars doesn't snap, but does get tagged and is going to be aware of PG's position. PG rotates after taking those shots. And makes the call out for their team, Max, to identify the rotation on objective. That's a much better position to put your sub in on the objective, like I recommended. So nice to see them making adjustments on the FOU side as well to be more successful. Deviants try to find that kill as Unlink takes shots to the middle and now Deviants find themselves in a bit of a bind. Especially with that res coming in. PG is here with as a threat. Unlink is essentially getting pinched, and Nemo is pushing forward here. Doesn't matter. Conoco finds the kill. Aztecs, the last surviving attacker. Oh my god, how the fuck am I trying to be dead? Uh... Oh, and Tonico finds the last kill. FOU. Shut down the Deviant offense. A solid defensive hold, and that's them their lead yet again, two to one. At this rate, they are barreling towards a map win if we continue to trade down defensive rounds. So, FOU not too disappointed with the current outcome, I imagine. Again, just taking a look in chat. I don't even know if uh, this was because I was talking about it yet, but the OP match did get brought up. And again, there are a lot of games that happen throughout the course of a regular season, so you do want to make sure to hit that follow button and again, tune in when those games go live. But I do see we already have uh, Mother's Membrane coming in with a follow. We appreciate your follow. Thank you so much for that. We also had an offline follow, or maybe a follow from a game earlier this after, or late last night from uh, Leander. And we do appreciate that. A couple of subs came in over the course of the game yesterday as well, and I'm sure they got their shout outs, but we appreciate all of the support. If you do have a Twitch Prime sub, that uh, sub money does come back to the production and casting team. And we really do appreciate any support that does come through, whether it is a Twitch Prime sub or even a follow, because we just like seeing your faces around here and enjoying the onward action. Let's see if Deviants can put up a solid defensive hold themselves as we go into round three on our map decider. <laughs> Do 
what? That is outrageous comms from the from the deviants. Seemingly forgetting that they've won the first game. We should do a little a dance real quick. A little bit of a hug. Oh yeah, yeah dog. You know, I love you. Day. Good luck. Hell yeah. A little too casual is going to cost them their lives as Nano comes flying in. Spooner down two. And FOU say, we want war, not hugs. Oh, Spooner. Oh, Spooner didn't get down. They just hit the ground. They, did they drop like they had died? I thought I'd seen them down. Either way, they're up again. Finding a kill. Tonico absolutely picking apart the Deviants' defense on the backside finds another. They may find a third if they look over towards Ghost. Oh, they can find the fourth. They can find the rooftop shot. Here it comes. Shoots on the bar. The bar swings around to find the kill. Ghost likely calling out that position as well. Jims does get rid of the rooftop defender now, though, and Ghost suddenly finds themselves alone in a 1v3. Smoke's coming out on objective. Nemo finds the kill. FOU take another map, or excuse me, round win. Pushing their lead up 3-1. Just a round away from taking the whole series. Looking, again, much more like a team I would anticipate to be in the gold division. Exciting to see Deviants play as well as they are here, though. And I'm sure they can learn a lot by looking back at this footage and analyzing what went right and wrong. But either way, a pretty impressive battle from them. And I think one, again, that surprised most people here that were tuning in. If you look at the connoisseur votes, I think a good amount of them were in favor of FOU. So, if anything, hats off to the Deviants for battling out as long as they have. They now go on the attack on a north objective, as we do swap OBJs every two rounds, and, well, this one's not easy to get to. FOU are going to be in some pretty meta positions, and I have concerns that Deviants may not be ready for those. And so there could be some, uh, you know, very successful defensive hold here. Depends on where Deviants spawn and how they push, but so far Deviants have been pretty aggressive on their entry points, and you can't necessarily push this one very aggressively unless you have a crater spawn. I say crater spawn, it's no longer a crater. It's actually filled in, but... Northeast spawn. You can't really play this one too aggressive. Actually, if you spawn in the west, you can also push up pretty fast. And that's where they spawn. Other side of quarantine, the west side. I actually think this is actually the fastest spawn. So if anything, it plays into the style Deviants have shown so far today. We'll see how they... Group hug! Get in here, boys! Group hug! Oh, the group hugs killed them last time. They haven't learned. They haven't learned from the hugs killing them. Both teams stacked up on the west approach. I mean, this is going to be the best opportunity for them to have success on this objective, honestly. This team has been playing fast. And that's not going to change with this west spawn point. Booner is going to fly up the west side. They'll be able to pop up here and potentially challenge some angles very early. It's like Tonico and Namo. Having some issues with their guns? Something happens where Spooner goes down and Nemo finds the quick refrag and now Tonic goes checking west, but that might be too late. Over on the top, PG catches one, but not two. Ghost is there. Objective is nearly Gosh. being pushed here, but Ghost doesn't continue to apply the pressure. Unlink and Aztec are a little bit too far away. And what could be an easy cap if they push in onto Max, find that kill. Might not be the case here. Jim, way over on the other side in the north, and they do have Tonico, but they're both pretty far away. And so Smokes and a push could net themselves two points here, put this into a tie series. Aztecs does confirm, no, catches 
Max on objective. That opens it up for Ghost to push in. They catch some shots from the north. Jim is there to hold down what could have been two points. Donico is also here with a line on, but they're still focused on the west side. They're not going to see Unlink until their head pops up and over and the shots come in. Unlink survives. Tonico just misses those shots. Calling back to you. Love you. A lot of time for Deviants to work with, but they don't seem to exactly have a grasp on where these defenders are, and Tonico rotating back also doesn't necessarily have a clear picture. Defenders dead on objective, attackers so close to objective. Jim still so far in the north, but ultimately has a pretty good line onto anyone pushing in from this side of the objective. And so it's really just a matter of Tonico watching their side. And as long as there's no smokes or prone pushing for caps. Oh no, a team kill from Jims. Oh, disastrous. Puts FOU into a 1v2, advantage deviants. Yeah, and Jim realizing what they've done, not very happy with themselves. Two minutes left on the clock for Jim to hold this thing down and lock in FOU a series win. Deviants are on their last two lives left and need to make something happen here. I don't think they have an idea of Jim's location right now. And wonder how they're going to push this because Jim does have eyes onto that corner that he should see this. And he does find unlinked down. Now is he going to rotate? This position has paid off so well so far. Aztec is super far away. Only a minute left for them to come crashing into the objective. And again, they likely don't have info on the position of this final defender. Could be the clutch FO you need to lock in this series or potentially clutch deviants need to stay alive. We'll see if Aztec can lock it in here. They do have that scope, so they do have the ability to go for the range shots. And after hearing that, they get some idea of the position of that of those shots. The trouble is, of course, pushing the same angle. Might be a little challenging, and Aztec. Oh, this is the route. Like I said, if they go slow and low, they can push it, but they don't have time. Ten seconds on the clock. Tablet comes out. They're pushing for the cap, trying to tie this up. 3-3. A nade's coming in from Jim. The flash is here. The cap's coming in. Time's going to end. Not enough time for Aztec to put it tied. They were so close. I think they ran out of ammo on the FOU defense. But that's going to be it. The series won on time, and man, <clears throat> what a series. Deviants have, have I have so many lessons to learn from this. You know, shooting in the cast, getting capped on the corner on Subway, letting the time end your round when you could have tied that 3-3. Wow.
overall though great for the deviants to be putting themselves into these positions so early on in their in their season uh in their development as a team very fun to see them battle up against again their first test this season with fou and solid to see fou really putting on a good display of map knowledge and understanding of the game and ultimately taking these final two maps so overall a great series to tune into and far more uh than what i expected out of a bronze silver matchup frankly so <laughs> Always surprised and happy to tune into the series. A big shout out to the Deviants and FOU for battling it out. And a shout out to everyone tuning in and enjoying the action. But that's going to be it for me here on the desk. My name has been Nightfire with two E's. Until next time, stay classy.